On the Hill, thank you as always. I have a little bit of breaking news from Twitter, not from the president, though, instead from one of his conservative tormentors, Ann Coulter. She, of course, had a role in this shutdown, according to many, by telling the president to dig in his heels and insist on that wall-related shutdown. Now she says, quote, good news for George Herbert Walker Bush. As of today, he is no longer the biggest wimp ever to serve as president of the United States. Let's get right to it. John Allen, NBC News political reporter, Bob Cusack, editor-in-chief uh, for The Hill. Uh, John, I guess this is very 2019. What began with Ann Coulter now has a, a denouement, if you will, with Ann Coulter. Um, what does it mean to you politically and substantively, because this story affects so many Americans, um, to have uh, Ann Coulter calling this president, quote, the biggest wimp ever? Well, I don't want to embrace her words there, but the president did promise a wall, and what he got was a legislative death trap. Uh, you've got a conference committee agreement from the Democrats. Let me explain for folks at home what that means. It means that the Senate is going to appoint several of its members to go negotiate with several of the House members. That means a group of senators, a majority of them being Republicans, will go to this, agree to this uh, negotiation. And a group of House members, the majority of them being Democrats appointed by Speaker Nancy Pelosi, will go to this meeting, likely to be House appropriators, likely Homeland Security appropriators, like Congresswoman Lucille uh, Lucille Roybal Allard, maybe Congressman uh, Henry Cuellar, who's on that subcommittee. You're going to get a bunch of people in that room who are Democrats who don't believe in a border wall. So uh, unless Nancy Pelosi changes her position that Donald Trump's not getting a dollar for a border wall, that conference committee is not going to give him a border wall. Right. I mean, uh, it's to more take likely it... to either die there or uh, or come up with something that doesn't include a border wall. Yeah, this I mean, was a complete capitulation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Bob, uh, to to get into the map and and sort of geographic vibes of all this, uh, we started with talk about a wall. We ended with a giant cave. Correct. Correct. I mean, this is a devastating defeat for the president. I think you make the argument it's actually worse than health care because at least Trump could blame congressional leaders for that, could blame John McCain uh, for voting no uh, on that bill. Uh, this was something that he just set up, that he said, I'm not going to cave, I'm not going to cave. And then he ended up caving. I thought he was going to go in the direction, uh, and he still might, uh, of, of declaring the national emergency. Um, but this doesn't work with, with independence. And I don't know where we're going to be in three weeks. I don't know how the dynamic is going to change. It's either a wall or no wall. Uh, so, uh, again, that could be another defeat coming for the president. And, and, and listen, Speaker Pelosi handled this very, very well. She's a veteran of Washington, uh, and her colleagues, I'm sure, are glad that they... Uh, appointed her speaker. Well, and Bob, you're saying that, as I understand you, you're saying that as a as a reporter, not as a on either team, right? No, that's right. That's Your right. view I mean, as a reporter, is... as some, I mean, you're the editor-in-chief of the Hill, as someone who follows this stuff, you're saying uh, anything can change, but this yes. was the first big fight of the Pelosi era, and you're saying it wasn't even close. It wasn't close. Though. This was this was a, a rough one. If you look at Twitter, whether it's Trump's base uh, or just independent, and the Hill is nonpartisan and independent, uh, she won, and she won easily. Uh, John? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Bob. Uh, the president doesn't have a wall. He shut down the government for five months, put 800,000 federal workers out of work for that period of time. You had the air system threatened. You had IRS workers not coming in. You had the national parks essentially destroyed. Uh, now he's going to have a three-week uh, hiatus. By the way, he was denied the ability to come give the State of the Union. I suspect at this point uh, there's no reason for Pelosi to prevent him from doing that. But this was a complete loss. It was a loss and so much pain that the president, who prides himself, by the way, big part of his brand is this resolve that he has, this unwillingness to back down and his desire to fight for the people who support him, his base. Uh, and he, he basically had to walk away from that completely uh, in the face of Pelosi just standing firm. Um, I think before you know, we, he, before he probably we go, learned a lesson about going up against